Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley speaking from Washington, D.C. We have genocide going on in Sirta and across Libya under a hail of bombs from the NATO air bandits and cowards. Appointment for Nuremberg for some of them, for a lot of them. And we've also got another sickening downward lurch into the world economic depression. It's Labor Day. This is, program is being taped on Friday, the 2nd of September. Monday is Labor Day. What's the state of labor? It's bad. The word this morning is 9.1% unemployment. No jobs whatsoever created in August, which inevitably means that many were lost, especially as the reactionary Republicans act out their anarcho-Confederate uh, fury against the payrolls of state and local governments. And we're also told that, I think, the Office of Management and Budget, that we're going to have 9% unemployment for the next two to three years. It's the worst unemployment report in a year. We're going to spend a lot of the program today about economics, about labor's remedy to this terrible economic depression. But first, let's look at Libya. Genocide, first of all, tops the agenda. Genocide always compels our attention. This is now NATO genocide against the city of Sirta, targeted in the same way, I guess, that some other cities, Tikrit, has been targeted in Iraq, it's supposedly a, a strong point of support for Gaddafi, and indeed it is. But what's now being created, as I've had occasion to talk about on uh, Iranian press TV, I think twice this week, please check that at tarpley.net, is it's a new Guernica. Remember the exercise, the Nazi Condor Legion bombing the city of Guernica back in uh, 1936 or 1937 in the Spanish Civil War? We're looking at something like that. Or Nanjing, the rape of Nanjing by the Japanese Kwantung Army in uh, the late 1930s. This was a matter of at least half a million and maybe a million people being killed openly, cynically, step by step over a period of many days, weeks, before the eyes of the world. Now, Libya is a country with six or seven million people, but the levels of genocide proportionally are certainly, certainly there. We've got to call for an immediate bombing halt by NATO. The U.S. must butt out of this situation. If the U.S. pulls out the logistical support and, indeed, the bombing support and the intelligence support, this entire wretched imperialist exercise will fall apart, just as the French-British attack on Suez in 1956 fell apart. It's the U.S. that's making this happening. happen. This is Obama's attack, Obama's genocide. And ironically enough, in the middle, we're getting more and more reports now from Amnesty International, a woman called El Tahawi. I wonder if that's the sister of the other one. El Tahawi of Amnesty International says that blacks are being rounded up, and God knows what's happening to them. Are they being executed? Are they being lynched? Are they being starved to death, mistreated, and otherwise uh, criminally molested? That's the handiwork of the racists, the anti-black, anti-African racists of the Benghazi rebel council, who now style themselves as the rulers of Tripoli. It's also complicated by the fact that the African Union, much credit goes to the African Union, for unlike the cowards and, and compradors and stooges and lackeys of the Arab League, the African Union has got the guts to say no we do not accept your filthy transitional national council. Unfortunately, Russia, Medvedev, has taken upon himself the shame of recognizing the transitional national council this past week. So the African Union has good reason to be wary of the racist, lynch mob, genocidal policies against black Libyans and black Africans in general carried out by this Benghazi group. How ironic that the first black American president is presiding over anti-black genocide in Libya. Surely there's got to be somebody who cares enough about this to make it an issue. 
the new Gernika, the new Nanjing. The siege was supposed to end in a bloodbath tomorrow, Saturday, September 3rd. This was the original plan of the rebels. But, of course, since the rebels are militarily feckless, since they have suffered very heavy losses, a lot of them have been killed over the past uh, month or so in particular, they have now decided to let the NATO bombers do the butchery. Uh, they've got a cordon around Sirta. They're preventing people from leaving. Uh, they want all of those people to be killed, and they want them to become a burden for the government of the, of the city. So they're not letting people out while NATO kills them inside the city. This is now called Responsibility to Protect Civilians, RPI, resp- uh, sorry, RPC, Responsibility to Protect Civilians. The Responsibility to Protect Civilians is now genocide in Sirta. Now, at the center of this, the crowning touch of this scandal, and really an affront in particular to U.S. public opinion, but really to civilization itself all over this planet. The coming of Belhaj, an al-Qaeda terrorist butcher, a mass murderer, a criminal who has left a trail of dead bodies across the world, a fanatic, a psychotic, a double agent, a misfit, a lunatic, a monster. All of these things. Libya's answer to Heinrich Himmler and the SS, Belhaj. Now, the uh, word on Belhaj came out basically last week. I think in particular the French newspaper Libération was one of the first ones to have it for, for their own reasons. It was then picked up in a Reuters wire, and the Reuters wire was then repeated in Francois and other <coughs> mainstream press across the globe. There is no doubt that this is Abdel Hakim Belhaj or Abdul Hakem Belhaj. It's Belhaj. Uh, in French, it's B E L H A J, and in English, it's B E L H A D J. He is now the military commander of Tripoli. He now has life and death, mainly death powers, over the inhabitants of a two million person. City. What is it, about the size of Denver or Atlanta? It's a big, big city. He is presiding over a reign of terror. He is presiding over mass murder and genocide. And the trick about Belhaj, I think I'm the only person in the world so far to have pointed this out, that Belhaj is a criminal who, like many criminals, operates under pseudonyms, under aliases. And his two aliases, maybe uh, listeners to this program will remember him more readily, this is Hasadi, or Hasidi, Hasadi, Hasidi. Take a look at Topley.net. You'll see I've given you the references back to the stories. It starts with Il Sole 24 Ore, I-L-S-O-L-E 24 O-R-E. Il Sole 24 Ore sent a reporter to the city of Derna at the end of March when the bombing had just begun, and it was a scandal that the city administration at that point, the the bloodbath in Derna, because there was pro-Gaddafi sentiment there as well as across the country. The bloodbath for the Benghazi rebel council in the city of Derna or Darna was being carried out by Hasidi Hasadi, now calling himself Belhaj. Um, he's a moving target, as you can see. So he was there, and of course they were, they were shocked also to find that his right-hand man was Kumu, or Gumu, K-U-M-U, K-U-M-U, G-U-M-U, and this guy was Bin Laden's chauffeur. So his sidekick is Bin Laden's chauffeur, who has spent six years at Guantanamo Bay concentration camp as a terrorist for, for helping uh, Bin Laden. Then there's a, another guy called Barani, who is also a veteran of the Libyan Islamic fighting group. So Belhaj Hasidi Hassadi is now directing mass murder in Tripoli with U.S. support, U.S. money, diplomacy, media, and all the rest. The world turned upside down, but really revealed for what it was. Back in a minute. <laughs> 